is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you need something from the Lord, we want you to get ready. Praise God, we have a preacher tonight. Amen. It's just ready to go. I'll tell you, full gospel is not suffering for preachers. We got them old and young. Amen. And they're on fire for God. So whatever you need from God, we want you to get ready tonight. I'll tell you what, why don't you just reach up and catch someone by the hand and, and look them in the face and something good is going to happen to you. How many believe that tonight? How many is expecting God to do something for you? We want you to get ready. Expect God. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. God is able to meet your needs here tonight. Praise God. This is fifth Sunday, so we let the ladies go for Praise God. On fifth Sunday, amen. And we have a young lady that walks and talks with the Lord. We thank God for her tonight. Let's receive her by the words of amen. Evangelist Carolyn Halton. <laughs> Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Somebody give the Lord some praise on tonight. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise on tonight. Truly, He is worthy. Can we just for a moment with, the, with, with our lips just tell the Lord that we love him? Can we just tell him that we really, really love him? Truly, God is so good and he's so kind and so merciful. You may be seated. Truly, I give it on to God to who's the head of my life, to my pastor, Apostle Lopez Murray, to Evangelist Shirley Murray. I praise God because it is an honor to be under their leadership. Magnifying the praise got to give um for Elder Sneed and to Evangelist Sneed, to all the ministers and to all the saints of God. Truly, I am blessed on tonight. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. I thank God for just being good all by himself. Thank God for being saved, if I can tell you again. I thank God for being sanctified. I thank God for being Holy Ghost filled. Thank God for being water baptized. I thank God for being chosen. I thank God for changing me. Can I just be thankful? Thank God for rearranging my life. I thank God for changing my heart. Thank God for changing the way I think. Thank God for changing the way I look at people. I, I thank God for the change of my attitude. I'm just grateful. I thank God for everything that he's done. I truly do love him with all my soul and all my, my heart and all my mind. I just thank and I praise God for this opportunity to stand before God's people. It is an honor to just stand before God's people. I thank and I praise God for being under this ministry. I, I don't plan to be before you very long, but if I can just encourage the saints of God on tonight. I thank and I praise God because God is the, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he's done in days gone by, he can do it in this present day and time. How many believe that? Do any saints still just believe the word of God as it is? I just still believe the word of God, and I believe that God is still doing the things that he's done before. If we can go to the book of Exodus, the first chapter. Talked about this before, but I can't let it go. I thank God for, for the, the series, the prayer of Je, um, Jabez. Thank and I praise God for how it's blessed my life. Praise God, that's the life of a true believer. Just going forth in the grace of God, growing in the grace of God. This day and time, while you're still finding Exodus, the first chapter, and we're going to start at the seventh verse, Exodus 1 and 7. And we're living in a day or time where everything is thrown at the true church of God. It's thrown at the true saints of God. I mean, there is nobody else to throw it at but the people that are real. And at the time, it's trying to water down the, the, the gospel of God and try to make people question what they believe. Make them question the very essence of God, his holiness. Make them question the way that we live, the way we're supposed to abide by what is in the word of God. And we're living in a day of time that people don't want to go through like they used to go through. I mean, people were actually killed for this gospel. In days gone by, people were actually, uh, women, babies were ripped out of their stomach. We, we read the Bible how the cruel things they went through. But God being God has given strength to his people. And if that's my continual prayer, Lord, just continue to give me strength. 
Over in the book of Revelation, there was a church that was only hanging on by a little strength. And he said, well, strengthen that which remain. So we have that strength. We can continue in God. Exodus, the first chapter, everybody most likely will have it by now. The first chapter and the seventh verse. And the children of Israel were fruitful. And increased abundantly. And increased abundantly. And multiplied. And multiplied. And waxed exceeding mighty. And waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. And the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt. Now which, there rose up a new king over Egypt. Which knew not Joseph. Which knew not Joseph, if you can hold right there. Praise God. We know the story how before, how Joseph had a dream, dreamed a dream, and he had some people that was hating on his dream. They didn't like the fact that um, God revealed some things to him. So because of that, he was thrown into a pit, and after that, he went through a, a lot of different things in his life. And the Bible went on to say that how Joseph, after he went through all of this, how God took him from the pit to the palace. And even in the palace, the devil was still trying to fight. He had lashed on to his blessing. And Joseph went through all of that. But yet Joseph, at the end of the story, said that even though the enemy meant it for evil, God meant it for good. And we go on to the book of Exodus, the first chapter. All that which Joseph did, they had the seven bad years and they had the seven good years. And he even brought his people with him to partake of the blessing and now they get over in Egypt land and, 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 and Joseph dies it's a problem sometime when people don't pass on what they have and then the, the legacy dies and Joseph died and all his family died and everybody he brought up there with him died and the Bible said that the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly if the reader could get Genesis 22 and 17 were fruitful and increased abundantly. Bear with me and pray for me. And they multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now, after all of this, a new king arose that didn't even know about what Joseph had laid down, didn't know about the price that Joseph paid, didn't know that Joseph had per, um, prepared for his people. And the Bible went on to say, and he said unto his people, this king, behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on and let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. Can you look to your name and say, lest they multiply? <laughs> and it come to pass that when they're falling out any war, they join also into our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. And therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramsey, but the more they afflicted them. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. That's a problem with that. that. That's something negative, but yet something positive came out of it. And they were grieved because the children of Israel. And, and, and if you could read Genesis 22 and 17 for me real quick. That in blessing I will bless thee. Mm-hmm. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed mm -hmm. as the stars of the heaven, mm -hmm. and as the sand which is up on the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. And there's something about God. God does not say anything and have to take it back. And his word is that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent, but had he said it. And shall he not bring it to pass? And, and right here, he already had promised um, their great, great, great grandfather, whatever it is, he promised him that your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. He promised them that I will bless them. He promised them that you will multiply. And he said, not only would you multiply, but your seed shall multiply also. As far as the sand is upon the sea of the shore. And so living off this promise, these people began to be blessing. Abraham was blessing. We know Jacob was blessing. We know Joseph was blessed. But now we get down to the people, um, the, the people of the following generation. And the Bible said that they were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied. And I just want to look at that word because in the beginning, God commanded man to be fruitful and to multiply. And we know that fruit 
fruit has seed in it. We know all of that. And we know that it produced something of its kind. But it's something about multiplying. Multiplying, it don't have to be the same thing. It's something about multiplying. Multiply means to add. Multiply means to increase. Multiply means to have a greater number. Divide means to subtract. But if we can talk tonight just about multiplying to the saints of God, can you look to your neighbor real quickly? And this is the topic we're just going to talk about a little. Tell them and declare to the enemy why you're telling them. Tell them I will multiply. Tell them I will multiply. In the first chapter of Exodus, we look at the king of um, the, the, the Pharaoh of Egypt. First of all, he looked out on these people. Before all of that, they were getting along all right. The, the Jews are going about, the children of Israel were going about their business as is. They were living their life in Egypt the way they were supposed to live it. They, um, Joseph already had prepared for this. But a new Pharaoh arose and he felt threatened by these people, just like the enemy feel threatened by the people of God. And so he felt threatened, and so he got with his other little comrades and he said you know what we need to do we need to stop them before they get started and it's just like the enemy he want to stop us before we even get started want to cut us down before we even start growing it's just like the enemy they say I think they're a threat to my kingdom so let me throw a little something they way so they won't even focus on God like they used to but I still believe the word of God and the word of God told me to be fruitful and to multiply and so we get down into the word of God and Joseph People were in, in a problem right now. They in another transition. It wasn't going forward. They was about to be um, at a standstill. And so he got with his other comrade and said, let us deal with them wisely. Let us kind of ease it on them. And that's what the enemy does. Let's not throw it all on them at one time. Let us try to confuse them. Let's try to weigh them down. Let's try to keep them busy. Let's try to get them going to their neighbor house gossiping. Let's try to backbite and tear them up and tear them down. Let's try to make them destroy each other. Let us come up with a plan. And so he said, let us deal with them wisely. I know they done, that, that children of that God that brought them out of battle before, so we can't just throw it over on them. We got we to gotta kind of slide it in on them, you know. They not, they not, they not like the, the world. They just take it as is. They got, you at least got to camouflage it. You at least got to um, bring it to them easy. And so what he began to do was he said, lest they multiply. It's a problem with multiply. Like I told you, it's adding and increasing. And, 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 and it, 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 it threatens the devil and it fears him when he see more than one or two on the corner. When he see them on the street corner on this side of Dallas and when they're at the grocery store on that side of Dallas and they're over in Lancaster and, you know, they on the school corners. Lest they multiply. Let's put a stop to this. Let's try to throw something extra on them. Lest they multiply. But I still declare to the enemy, I will multiply. And it comes to pass that when they're falling in the war, just in case, and, and they realize the power that they possess. The children of Israel didn't know what they possess. They, they knew that they served a God that would go before them. They knew that they served a God that always made a way. They, they knew that they served a God that were in hard times he brought them out. They knew all of that, but they hadn't had a big trial yet, so they didn't know what was in them. And so he said, before they even realize that they're strong enough to overtake us, let's try to um, end this before it gets started. Why do he want to stop you? Because he know that you have the power to say no. You just don't realize it yet. He know that you can come out of sin and stay out of sin if you tell God you want to be kept. You just don't realize it yet. You don't realize that you possess something that's greater than him. Because the Bible said, greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. And you just don't realize it yet. You don't realize the treasure that you have in you don't realize the tools that you're working with yet but can we go a little further so what he did was he said taskmasters over it's simple it's a compound word they masters over their tasks so everything that they did they wanted to control it whether they went out or in they wanted to control it um he began to afflict burdens on them because that didn't bother the, the children of israel on um, much because they were okay the ch you know kind of like the saints of god i'm okay because i'm serving a great god and you don't realize we sometimes we don't realize what's being thrown at us because we just serving the great god that we serve and so he began to afflict burdens on them and the bible went on to say but the more that he afflicted them. The more he began to hit them, the more he began to throw it up on them, the more he began to heap it up on them, the more that he held their hands, the more that he tried to cut them off. The Bible said that they multiply and grew. Thing 
was. It's okay if they were fruitful, they were bringing forth seed, but they were beginning to double and triple and, and, and quadruple, whatever words you want to use, begin to go um, as many. And the Bible said it grieved them that it happened. We grieve the enemy when we begin to go to our brother and say, hey, the one that don't even like you, hey, let's go out on the street. Let's go out there and get some more souls for God. When we begin to say we can do a greater work, let's start backing up the ministry. Let's give a little bit more. Let's give till it hurt. When we say let's back up the past and push him a little bit further, it grieves him when we don't want to call it. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. He began to make it so strenuous and so bad it was bitter. He began to make them make bricks. Praise God. It went on to say that they didn't even have straw to make it. So he saw that the work didn't bother us too much. Even on your job, sometimes they give you extra duties to do just to, just to do it because she, you know, she a child of God. She ain't going to fuss. She ain't going to argue. She ain't going to, she'll, she'll do overtime. She'll miss service tonight. So they began to throw, throw all of that at him. And so he saw that that wasn't enough. He said, let me cut off the lifeline. Let me, the, 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 they're having sons, and let's see if we can kill the sons. The son, man, we know what men can do. Know that men um, um, is the support to the women and all of that. He said, let us cut that off. Let us cut off the seed at the root. But God being God, always make an escape route. God being God, always provide a better way. But, you know, even when they tried to cut off the sons uh, um, of God, the, the sons of Israel, that God kept on making a way. Because even when they were doing that, even when the sons were coming forth, even when your, your anointing is still coming forth, even when the gift that God has in you is still coming forth and somebody is trying to smother it, there's always a remnant left. And every time when they try to tell you to sit down, why are you shouting so much? Why are you praising God so much? Why are you testifying so much? Why you going to church so much there's a reason because even in that in the 20th verse after they started killing off the baby boys after they started having the mothers watching them continuously the bible said the people still multiply there's still a problem with that we cutting off the person that's going to carry the fruit but they still multiply I, I don't get it, and it's just like God to confuse the mind of the enemy. It's just like him to blind his eyesight. It's just like him not to hear what's going on, hear the plan that's going for it. And the Bible said that how they still multiplied. And after all of that, they began to kill with vigor, but God made an escape route. He allowed a man to come up by the name of Moses. And the Bible said that how Moses, praise God, did what God wanted him to do. God took him on the backside of the mountain to teach him. First of all, he let the enemy raise him and find out what his plan was. He allowed him to school him and master what they were trying to do. Allowed him to master the plan that they were about to do to the people of God. It's just like God to prepare his people before time. God sent us to Moses, praise God, that even when the enemy is trying to do his little thing, while the enemy is still trying to put it on the assembly line, God still sent us to Moses to let us know what the plan of the enemy is. Just to know that we still will multiply because God said it and God's word will not go out and return void. It's just like God when they was trying to get ready and cut them off. But God, you know what the Bible said over in Psalm that God is a shield to them that trust in him. That when he's still throwing his darts and his arrows by night, God went by, by, by God being God just like he is. God said, I'll be a shield and I'll block every one of them. And when he's getting ready to try to take you out, I'll stand behind you and I'll protect you. I encamp my angels all around you just in case they try to hurt you. I will multiply. I will multiply. You said that I wouldn't make it. That's all right. You said that I wouldn't amount to anything, but I will multiply because my God said so. You said that the anointing is gone. You said I can't sing no more. You said that I'm not as safe as I'm supposed to be. You said that I'm not sanctified like the word said it. You said that I'm not washed by his word like you said it, but the devil is a liar and I will multiply. That's my life in multiplication. It's doubling and it's tripling. You said my family wouldn't be saved, but I guarantee you they'll be saved. And they'll come in by droves of numbers because God said I will multiply. I will multiply. There's no division in God. It's not like God to subtract and take away. 
unless you're not doing the will that you're supposed to be doing. But if you are upright and perfect and living the way God wants you to live, you have to multiply. He said the way of a transgressor is hard. The one that don't keep the law in this word. The one that don't walk according to my laws. The ones that don't keep my commandment. That's, it's hard for them. It ain't hard for me. Because I live the way you told me to live. I walk the way you told me to walk. I talk the way you told me to talk. I do what you told me to do. So it's, it's in me to multiply. Saints of God, life is in you. Life is in you. God, God has blessed us to multiply. It's in us. To, and, and like I said, not fruitful because you're going to give birth to the same kind, but multiply means you can multiply by any number and get a larger number. 12 times 2 is 26. We know that. 12 times 12 is 144. It's the same first number, but the second number has changed. I will multiply. As Apostle said, would you best enlarge in my, my coast, enlarge in my border? It's a part of that. Well, it won't even grieve me when it happens. When I don't even realize you did it, God, and the joy of it has just overshadowed me. And, and I just have to sit there and say, oh, glory, God, how did you do it like that? Because, God, you're just good all by yourself. Oh, God, but I will multiply. When you try to send me down, I will multiply. Something inside of me won't let me die. Something inside of me won't let me sit down. Something inside of me won't make me let me go back to Egypt. I will multiply. I will multiply. I will multiply. Everything about you, the enemy said, trying to put sickness upon the saints of God like never before. Send them back and forth to the hospital. I don't know what's wrong with me. They giving me six months. They giving me eight months. The devil is a liar. You thought the Bible said, I shall live and not die. Because I got to declare the works of the Lord. You don't understand. I still have a work left in me to do. God still got some things for me to do. God still got some streets that I got to go on. God still got some doors I got to knock on. He still got some people I got to tell about the goodness of God. I will multiply. Oh, glory. I'm just tired of them. This was another. Just, just, uh, uh, it's just another lie. That's the only thing. I, I, every time it comes to me, it's just another lie. Are, are you tired of bringing that old trick back to me? You, you tried it before, and you're going to try again? Now, we got to realize the devil ain't that smart. The Bible said there's nothing new under the sun, so everything he done tried, we need to seen it before or heard it before. So we know that there's have to be some multiplication in us. We got to realize that we are multipliers. That means that we double, we increase abundantly. The Bible said that even when they started afflicting things on them, they started throwing things at them. They started putting it, making it hard. They had to get their own straw and still had to make the bricks. The Bible said they still multiply. Cut off the men, cut off the source. But yet God said, I'm the source. So they kept on multiplying. And that's what the enemy does. Try to cut off our resources sometimes. Try to make it cut back. Who got the cut back? The same got the cut back. The devil is a liar because God is still my source. So I don't care how much you cut back, God's going to still make a way. God's going to still make a way because he's just God like that. And if he, if the earth is his footstool, if the earth is his footstool, he hung the stars, hung the moon, and you mean to tell me that God ain't going to provide for me? Little bitty me? He said if he took care of the birds of the air and I'm his child, and he said, what kind of father is going to give them a stone when they ask for something to eat? That's not a good father. And I know my father is good because he sent his son down here to die for me. All right. I will multiply. There is life in me. When I accepted Jesus, God came into my life. He gave me life. Without him, that's when I'm nothing. Because we know one times zero is? Two times zero the number keep going up, but time zero, it is nothing. So without Christ, then I'm nothing. But with Christ, I am somebody. I am going to cut this off. But we need to know that Jesus will provide for us. And if I ever go a little further, we know how they went through Egypt and went through all of that. And, and, and even after that, God delivered them. And there is some things that nobody can help us out of. Not the bank, not the best person with credit, not a co-signer. Only God can deliver us. 
Those people could not have anybody else delivering them but a mighty deliverer like God. They were in bondage. Sin is bondage. And nobody can deliver you from sin like God. Nobody can deliver you from sin. Not the therapist, not the best speaker, not the, the one with the wisest word, only God can deliver you from sin. And they were in bondage, great bondage. And there was nothing that can be done except for them to cry out to God. And when they cried out to God, God heard. Because God said his hand is not too short that he cannot save us. Neither is ear too heavy that he cannot hear us. He hears us. And he hear you if you need Jesus in your life tonight. This time, everyone stand it. I just feel like this. If God could deliver the Hebrew boys out of fire, if he could deliver Daniel out of a lion's den, and if he could deliver David out of a horrible pit, he can deliver us on today. If there is anybody here that know you need Jesus in your life, Listen, you're in, you're in Egypt. Can nobody deliver you but God? And it will be a sad thing to want to stay in Egypt and have a taskmaster like the devil over you. There's nothing he can do for you. He don't love you. And his whole goal is to destroy you. Jesus told us he came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come. I come. That you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly so you can multiply. And if you're standing by yourself, you can't multiply because everything times zero is nothing. If you need Jesus in your life tonight, not if, you need Jesus in your life if you don't have Jesus. If you're not saved, if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, if you never heard yourself speak in tongue, you need to be down here. You need to be down here. You don't want to be in Egypt. Egypt is a horrible place. It's a horrible place.